how to make a very complicated part using a custom hammer form die. I was able to enlist the help of Jay Jarvie from Builder Creator. He's a genius building his own supercar and I'm going to show you a clip of his video at the end of this one. This is the part that I sent Jay. This is a what you call a buck or a form. And I basically made it of MDF and just did some body work on it, some fiberglass until I got it to the shape I wanted. And he was able to send me back this. This is 25 pounds of aluminum that he was able to cast for me. There's a few flaws in it, as you can see here. This piece is much bigger than what he's used to working with, so his forge was at the limit of what it's able to handle. So there were some flaws. If you want to see how Jay made this, just click the link in the description below, and he has a video showing you how it was done. I had to trim away quite a bit of this metal. Um, I didn't film that because I'm afraid you guys would have called the police on me for what I had to do to my poor bandsaw. So starting with some rasps and files, rasps. I put this thing on a diet and I uh, started to trim away a lot of the excess material and fix the flaws. Rasps, very dangerous. You go first. Anyway, a little body filler and we're good to go. Now you can see I've built a little wooden case around this thing. This is just basically so I have something to screw the sheet metal to as I'm working it. And this took me a little while to figure out what shape to start with, but uh, this horseshoe crab shape looking thing works just perfectly. So I'm giving it a bit of a pre-bend just to uh, fit down into the die a little bit better. And uh, I've got it screwed here and also in the back. And I'll hold it up to show you. A couple screws here and there. And a uh, nice little bend started. Now using a teardrop mallet, I'm going to just start hammering in the center and stretching out the center of this piece of sheet metal. It looks terrible right now, but it will, when it comes down and meets the surface of the die, it'll actually be a almost perfect surface. So the idea is to stretch out the center so that it, that it doesn't come back on itself uh, later on. So this goes down into the die and after a while you get a nice mostly flat surface. You can see there's some imperfections there but it's, uh, it's generally flat. It's not nearly as bad as, as you think it is. I think the lights I have on the bench are kind of playing with the way it looks in the camera. Now the surface is pretty flat and I'm going to uh, find these edges here. So I'm just going to kind of creep up on the edges because we're going to make a flange here. So we're just going to creep up on it so that I can kind of mark it with the hammer so that I'll be able to uh, take it out and do a little bit of trimming. If I had done this part first, I would have a real hard time with this thing moving all around as I was stretching out the center. Now I'm taking it out of the die for the first time. As you can see, it still needs some work, but um, now I can see where the edge is and I can uh, trim this off a little bit. If I were to leave this edge as thick as it is, it's too much metal to kind of curve around and curve down, so it would fight me the whole time and uh, it would likely rip a little bit as well. This is uh, 50 thousandths aluminum, by the way. Okay, now that I've found the edge and I've trimmed it off, I'm just basically hammering uh, carefully and just kind of creeping up on it and moving down and bending that flange over. Be sure to subscribe to Builder Creator. I think when I first found him, he had about 500 subscribers and I think he's coming up on 60,000 now, a couple months later. So go check him out. So right here in the center is where it's uh, there's a threat of it stretching too much and cracking. As you can see, it's not perfect here, but I'm cutting that out anyway. And here's a little crack that I got. But that's okay because this part is getting trimmed down much smaller anyway. Surface is not quite perfect, although the camera makes it look a little worse than it really is. 
But uh, a, a secret I like to use, a little tip, uh, I just take a file, a nice flat file. It's got a rounded edge on it actually on the other side. But just rake it over the surface in all directions and it will flatten it out for you very nicely. And then after some sanding, um, this is what it looks like. This is a beautiful part and uh, goes on my Rocketeer jetpacks. Like I said, Jay Jarvie is a clearly a genius, a uh, very smart man, and I've learned so much from him. He has my very favorite YouTube channel currently, so make sure to go check him out. Here's a short clip of one of his videos to show you what he's working on. All right, today is the day. I am Jay Jarvie, and we are here with part two of building a supercar from scratch. Now in part one, we said in the description or the title, that this was building a supercar from scratch at home in your spare time. Now I've had a few people that are a little bit doubtful of the part about building the car in your spare time and at home. But you're here in my studio, 26 foot square, which is attached to the house. And I do do this in my spare time. Most of the time I operate from maybe like nine o'clock to two in the morning in the construction of this, trying to push that more into the day and get more time involved in it. But basically, so far to this point, it has been spare time as I have other things going on in my life and other things that I am dedicated to as well. Well, you're probably not here to listen to me chit chat about this kind of things and we can cover that at the end of this video. But let's get into the work and see what we have done since the completion of part one. And here in part two, what's the work that we've accomplished to date? Let's go look at that. In part one, we had just finished putting the floors and the bulkheads into the structure that's going to become our monocoque tub. And we had also inserted a couple of pieces of tubing that are going to be conduit and some areas to transfer wiring and other things through the tub. And now we're going to go ahead and laminate those to the floorboards because everything we put in here is going to become structural into this monocoque tub. So I'm just, uh, like I said, laying some fiberglass over this uh, conduit that's going through here and that is now uh, bonded to the floors. Now this door area is being cut out so it makes it really easy access into the vehicle. That's a really big problem in a lot of supercars like this, the wide seals, but I am using this tunnel that's gonna go through the center and just some smaller door seals. But to reinforce those, we're gonna use some unidirectional fiber, meaning all the fibers are going in one direction. We're gonna build up about six layers on each side of this piece of foam and this is being laid up on a piece of plastic so that we can take it over and install it into the vehicle. Now I said, during this whole thing, much of the work we're doing originally here is just to get the basic structure down. There is gonna be much more work in putting laminations in this monocoque tub to build strength up. Now this is, uh, like I said, creating our door seals, but it's gonna be covered over in some future steps here. So we need to go ahead and get some of that structural lamination in place because like I said, we're gonna cover that up. So we put that foam core in there with those uh, unidirectional fibers and now I'm gonna cover it with some regular fiberglass cloth to just kind of smooth it out. It kind of condenses the unidirectional fibers, pushes the air out and makes it a lot smoother so that we need to be able to go ahead and uh, scuff it up for the next layers to bond to it as well. So we're gonna a couple of layers of fiberglass over it to like clean it up and then move on to uh, building that door sill up to the shape it's going to be. So here we've got our tubing laminated, our little structural piece here with this door sill that's going to make the edge of our door sill. And now we're going to go ahead and move on. Now you see these unidirectional fibers come up and they turn and go back and bond to the bulkheads themselves and there will be more added on when the added structure comes in tying to this uh, recess piece here that will be a major lamination of unidirectional fibers. So to build this uh, door sill up to the shape it's gonna be now, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw a simple cardboard form together and pour some expanding urethane foam in there. Now this is not structural foam, but just a foam that's gonna take the shape we're gonna create out of it. And we'll put our laminations over the top of that foam. One of the pieces that needed to be added to this whole door sill area is this a uh, strike plate we might call it where the door comes down and latches on we're going to build that out of a one inch thick piece of uh, urethane foam sheeting 
And then we're gonna also put some more expanding foam in the back to make the transition from that little uh, strike panel down to the end there a little bit smoother. So tear off our uh, little disposable forms for holding our foam in place. If you want to see more, make sure to go subscribe to Builder Creator. There's a link in the description. Thank you, Jay, for all your help on this project. I owe you one. See you next time, guys.